nature of that experience for contributors where it's going to be easier for people to add more information and edit is um, meeting you know, global standards and obviously trying to make that experience easier for users. And you know, mobile is one area you know, we're looking at to make sure that people can access that information easily and more effectively. Our advisory board consists of a lot of different groups of people, um, some that are experts in community health, technology, um, uh, media, just to make sure that you know, we have all those bases covered so that we create the best possible project. And then obviously what I talked about before is our volunteer chapters. Now we could not do a lot of the work that we are doing right now without the help of our volunteer communities. And then, you know, the volunteers, the ones that actually sit there and they edit um, and they contribute to the projects and making sure that information grows. Now, like I said, when I say 100,000 active volunteers, those are the ones that really edit pretty often, you know, on a month-to-month -month basis. But in terms of just editors in general, they get into the millions. Now, our chapters um, at this point um, I think about the same time last year, we had about 18 chapters worldwide. Now we're at 27. So you could see a phenomenal growth of on the ground movement. And one of our most recent chapters, as you can see, is uh, Wikimedia Portugal. And they've been very active along with all the other chapters in trying to engage um, libraries, galleries, getting more information available, also getting meetups for people so they can have a little more understanding of how they can contribute to the projects. So as I said, the way we look at um, a person that supports uh, our mission is really also a volunteer. I mean, what I want to be really clear about is that being able to contribute to the projects and what we do doesn't mean you have to edit. I mean, there are various different ways you can contribute. And that's, you know, you could be a technology, you could program, you could um, help with meetups, you could engage different institutions to make sure more information is donated, you could upload photos, those are all people that can be supporters and volunteers of the movement. Now when I got into a little more detail, when you break down the active editors, there's actually a subset of the 100,000, a little over 10% that are extremely active. And those people make over 100 edits in the same month. And like I said, you know, there are, so there are a billion edits, and they do come from all across the board, even from people that contribute anonymously. So as I wanted to say, really this is about the people. The technology is only an enabler at this point. And you can contribute in very different ways, as I just kind of talked about. Um, public outreach and communications. We have a list if you wanted to join and contribute. And let's say you're a PR person. Um, there's a way to get involved with us, but not not being an editor, and this is really helpful for us in a lot of ways. Software development and systems administration. We have, I would say back um, in 2003, um, people know Brian Vibber, who was formerly our CTO. He was probably him and um, another person um, based in Australia, Tim Starling, were the primary developers of our platform. But most of the platform obviously was developed by volunteer contributors. So. They all contributed code, and they really just facilitated that process. You know, so there are different ways you can actually make the projects better. Like I said, taking photos, making maps, creating video and audio. Um, there are different ways you know, we're going to see evolving. I mean, we're trying Wikipedia on, video on Wikipedia right now. And for people to upload these photos and video and rich media actually really contributes to improving the quality of Wikipedia and the other projects. So you don't have to be an editor. You don't have to go in and type in new information. Also, organizing meetups. Um, this is what the chapters do. They really try to get more people engaged and explain what's going on in different ways you can be a volunteer. And then building relationships with cultural in institutions. I mean, for example, our German chapter, they've engaged the government, um, you know, getting grants, really working with other institutions to try to bring more, you know, content into the projects. And a lot of this can involve museums. I know the British chapter right now is working with the British National Museum to try to take photos and import that rich media into Wikimedia Commons so people can access that and use that for reports, for their studies, and so forth. And fundraising. 
we have a lot of um, active volunteers around the world that really engage in trying to bring you know more money into the projects. I mean, partly we need that to increase our infrastructure, but there are programs out there where people can get actively involved, and fundraising really helps so we can go out and fund different activities by volunteers where they can have meetups and they can have educational opportunities like this. And that's where fundraising is very important. So some people want to know what exactly is the profile of an editor? Well, we know that they come from every part of the world. Um, because we're online, obviously, and we're in every possible language, all you need is to have internet access. And you know, we've seen that growth happen in some of the global south areas where Latin America and Africa still need to kind of catch up to Europe and North America. But once you have that access, really, it doesn't matter where in the world you are. At this point, uh, most of our editors are typically male, um, early to late 20s, single, uh, typical um, profile as a student, graduate student. And what we're trying to do is spend a lot of time encouraging other communities um, within the world to contribute. And I would say, you know, people that are, you know, in their 40s and 50s, we'd like to see more of them contribute. We would like to see more women involved. And we're actively um, working with our chapters and um, different institutions to encourage people that, you know, anybody can edit Wikipedia and then should get involved with that. So moving away from you know, academics and smart geeks that are technologically inclined, we're doing a lot of things with usability to making that process easier and educating people on how you can be part of um, the editing community. Obviously multilingual because a lot of these projects, there's a lot of translation involved and some of our editors do translations, they focus on that. You know, so a lot of their background is they understand multiple languages. And the evidence right now is that it really is truly worldwide. And what's pretty interesting is that, um, let's say you're a Portuguese speaker. Um, some of our editors, even if they're from Portugal originally, they might be based in Asia, in North America, and they're still contributing to the Portuguese Wikipedia. Because you know, a lot of people you know, may be based in other countries. But really, what they do is come back to the language. So we're seeing that. No matter where you are, and no matter what community you're involved in, you can access it from different areas. So it really is like when we look at our server logs, we can tell that people are contributing from all parts of the world. And the most important thing is that everyone has the same core values. And this is universal wherever you are in the world. So really what makes Wikipedia what it is, is that we really focus on neutral point of view. I mean. It is an encyclopedia. If there is a bias to the article, then you know, that's not going to be useful for anyone in the world. So people that come on board really know that this is all about making sure that the, the information is unbiased. It's also verifiable. So you can't just go into Wikipedia and put in any information that you think is appropriate because you think it is. You need to really have a citation for that. So if you ever go in and somebody deletes your article or part of your article, it's because it wasn't cited properly. Because I mean, to make this credible, we need to make sure that the information is verifiable. Um, notable, that, that means that, you know, and this is kind of always still in debate, but it has to be information that is going to be um, useful and universally accepted as something that um, is useful for people around the world. And like I said, it has to be proven facts. Um, if you have an opinion about something and it can't be verified, it doesn't belong in Wikipedia. And the other thing that is really important is that it's free. We're all about free knowledge. Our big movement is to make sure that everybody has access to this and they don't have to pay for it. So when you think about these things, I like to come back to this, these five sentences, because it really makes you think about what we do and why we do it. So really about open platforms. We really want to let the world in. Passion for fact is universal. Everybody wants to have the truth. And everyone that's involved with this are involved with that, that notion. Sometimes you must meet. I mean, we've been very successful up until this point where most of it has been primarily online. But we do want to facilitate more interactions with community members. And sometimes you just need to meet face to face just like this, because that's really what gets you engaged. 
free is a powerful motivator because if it's free, um, people are more excited about it. I mean, really what you want to be able to do is get to that information, not be encumbered or restricted to use it. And so everybody that's involved with it really knows that free is our most powerful weapon. And there are language borders, not geopolitical ones. So really, if you're going into a different Wikipedia, it's really all about language. You know, because you want to be able to get the information that you need in the language that you can really understand. So we don't divide our, our sites by, by politics or geo or borders or anything of that sort. It's really just about the language. So in Portuguese, you know, we like to see how the Portugal community does work with the Brazilian community, Mozambique, Angola, as those are starting to develop as well. Because really, it's universally about communication. Now, I kind of want to walk you through a pretty interesting example. So I'm sure all of you remember the Mumbai attacks. And this is how um, our community comes together and actually makes an article um, work. So in 2008, you know, you had the attacks on, on terrorist attacks in Mumbai. And what happened was 43,000 words were developed with 142 references. This, this really happened in 60 minutes. That's how fast things work. So right when the Mumbai attacks happened, um, people from all over the world came in. They started editing um, primarily in English to begin with, but then obviously in Hindi, um, in Tamil, and some of the other Indian languages. And then this migrated very quickly to all of the other languages. People were editing in their own languages. They were translating from different articles and making sure this article was up very, very quickly. So we had more information about the Mumbai attacks in about an hour before anybody else even had, um, you know, five sentences about it. So that's how fast our community works because we have that collaborative platform. And this is just one typical example of what's going out there. I could bring many, many different more up there. And so, like I said, because of that philosophy of open platforms, the passion for fact, um, being free, not thinking about geopolitical borders, this is why we can create content so quickly. And I'd also like to talk about how even though there are, you know, um, difficulties within different topic areas, the community does like to work things out. So there's an article, this is actually um, where our next uh, Wikimedia Academy is going to be, um, which follows with uh, our Wikimania conference. And that's where all of our community worldwide gets together and meets up. And this year it's going to be in Dansk, in, which is in Poland, northern Poland, in July. But the article about the city has always been under debate because the city also was in German territory. And it was in German, it's called Danzig. And there has been a lot of struggle back and forth between those two communities, the German community and the Polish community, because you know, they defined it one way, and the, Germans def the Polish defined it one way, the Germans defined it a different way. But what ended up happening after you know, probably about a year is that they pretty much agreed that, depending on what time in history, you're going to see it defined in a different way, whether it's Dansk or Danzig. And really what they, they understood, it's about information making sure that it's open and free. And so both points of view are incorporated into that article. And the thing is, you could actually go and see the disputes about this. I mean, this is why we're so different. Like, when you get a different uh, resource out there, you don't know where that information is coming from. Um, you can't see the history. Everything about Wikipedia is recorded. So if you don't understand why there was an argument about this, you could actually go in and see why it was disputed. You know, what were the arguments were against that. You can see the history of every person and every article that's been edited. You know, so all of that's there. We're extremely transparent. And that really helps in our credibility and reliability. So like I said, that still goes back to what we always talk about. I mean, we want to let the world in, and we want to make sure that you know, this is all about language. We don't want to make it about politics. 
And so I'd always want to make sure that people 